watching the Commissioner's Report. I'm your host, Kevin Wattler, and we're here now with Commissioner Dantzler and also Miss Florida 2016, Courtney Saxon. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good Thanks to be here, Thanks for having Kevin. us. So, Miss, the Miss Florida pageant, why is it in Polk County? It's in Polk County for a couple of reasons. It's a good thing to have here. Um, their executive director, Mary Sullivan, who I met a couple of years ago at another pageant, said she wanted to bring it back to Polk County. She's a Lakeland girl, went to high school here in Lakeland, and she wanted to bring the pageant back to Lakeland and Polk County. Um, she was having some trouble getting some meetings. I was able to set up some meetings, and throughout the meetings, I'm discovering that we're booking a whole lot of hotel rooms, a whole lot of restaurants, so it's a huge economic driver for Polk County. Um, during the slowest time of the years for hotels during the summer and you had a big contingent with you didn't you? I did even finals night not including my family had over 40 people in attendance so wow. that's what it's all about is you know bringing those people into Lakeland. And they didn't all stay in one room so they booked a <laughs> bunch of hotel rooms they had a bunch of different restaurants so the multiplier effect of just Courtney's family and friends <laughs> And you multiply that by 40 or 50 other girls, and then the Miss 50 Florida. 50 with the Miss, and then even our teens sometimes teens. can get up to 30, 40 contestants wow. as well. So their families, their friends, they all come from all across the state, right here in the heart of Florida, right here in Lakeland. And they had the little prince and princesses. Yes, and that our was, princess and princesses. Most girls hilarious. have between one to five, oh, wow. and right. that's their families as well. So you know, we bring not only a lot of girls, but we bring our communities. And, and, and the, the production crew came out of Monroe, Louisiana, so there was mm -hmm. professional production. Uh, it was uh, it was a production that rivaled anything that you'd see on TV. Um, Our was, choreographer is from New York. She's mm -hmm. a Broadway choreographer, um, and so the show is handled truly professionally, and it's it's a Broadway show. It is, and it moves. It moves. There's not a lot of downtime. I mean, you keep going right on through the program. So it's as a person who grew up with all brothers and didn't do the pageant scene, my daughter didn't do it. You missed I mean, out. I obviously missed <laughs> but out. But welcome. <laughs> it was it was a night of a lot of entertainment. I mean, a lot of positive mm -hmm. activity, and you know, got to see Courtney crowned that night, and she and I become friends over the last six, seven months. So. Wonderful. So it's Courtney. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Obviously, you're not exactly from Polk County. Um, not originally from Polk County, but as Miss Florida, I have moved to Polk County. I live in downtown Lakeland at No Bay, okay. and that is fully because of a sponsorship um, from Broadway Apartments. So I'm very grateful for having the opportunity to live here, but not originally from here. Mm -hmm. From Stark, Florida. It's between Jacksonville and Gainesville. Grew up there on Kingsley Lake my entire life, and then I went off to the University of Central Florida for college when I was about 18 years old, um, and then now I'm currently working on my master's. So I lived in Orlando for five years for school and then moved here to Lakeland for this amazing job. So what's it like being a contestant? Being a contestant in the Miss Florida pageant is a whirlwind. It's a thrill. I mean, honestly, even just thinking about it could bring goosebumps to my arms because, you know, you work so hard for something. For me, I had the goal of being Miss Florida since I was about 12, 11 years old. So I was constantly working, not maybe every day as a young girl, but especially in these last few months leading up to the pageant, I was doing five a day or working five days a week with my trainer, you know, working on my interview, working on my presence, working on my walk. So you has a lot building up to it, all for just a week and all for that final night. So, so you don't just show up that day and no, do it. You it's, don't, it's a yeah, years and years of preparation. Years of preparation and years of building that confidence to be able to go up on stage mm -hmm. and perform. Mm -hmm. oh, what was your platform? My platform is Get Up, Get Moving, Volunteer. And I started that when I was 13 years old with competing in the Miss Florida's Outstanding Teen Pageant. I was Miss Florida's Outstanding Teen in 2008. Um, so this isn't my first time in pageants, mm -hmm. um, but it is you know, keeping with the Miss Florida organization, the Miss America organization. Um, but I started that platform because of my love for giving back to my community. And I saw the need in other communities, not only in my hometown of Stark, Florida, but all across the state. And as Miss Florida's outstanding teen, I saw the need grow. And so through my platform over the past about eight years, I've been able to encourage um, youth, young adults, and even older adults to get involved into their communities and give back because the whole heart of this organization, Miss Florida, Miss America, and even our local titles, it's all about service, a heart of service, having a servant's heart. And I wanted to pick a platform that not only correlated with the organization, but correlated with my heart. I've done over a thousand hours of volunteer work in community service, and that was before the time I graduated from college. It's something that's near and dear to my heart, and that's what a platform's all about. 
much. Yeah? And some of your accomplishments, you, what, you want to list some of them? Yeah, um, well, I think my biggest accomplishment, hands down, is Florida. Of, of course. <laughs> I mean, how many people can say that they have the greatest job in the world and they've won over $30,000 in scholarship because of that job? Um, but before I was Miss Florida, I, um, before I was Miss Florida, I think my greatest accomplishment was winning the Outstanding Student Award for my college. I was voted on by all of the professors within my college, and not only because of grades, but also because of the type of person I was and the student and my servant heart that I, at graduation, was given this, the highest prestigious award in our college. Um, and also, I think one of my biggest accomplishments as Miss Florida was partnering with Advanced Recovery Systems. Um, it's a business of mental health facilities focusing on rehabilitation. And what I do for them as their brand ambassador is traveling all across the state into middle schools and high schools, giving a presentation called Real Talk. And through Real Talk, I'm able to open up and have an honest conversation with these students about drug and alcohol abuse. And I'm the first Miss Florida to embark mm -hmm. on this school tour. And I'm very proud that we have hit the ground running. And my hope throughout this year is to not only improve on that program by booking multiple schools, you know, reaching my goal of 40 schools throughout this year, but also being able to hand kind of the crown over to the next Miss Florida with another part of the job as Real Talk to her. Excellent. And if someone wanted to book you for like a speaking engagement, how would they go about doing that? Well, I do a lot of different types of engagements. If you're thinking of the Real Talk with Miss Florida through Advanced Recovery Systems and our partnership, all you have to do is go to drugrehab.com backslash real talk. All the information is there in booking the schools. But if it's for a speaking engagement, like Todd has a lot of times, you know, connected me with people, whether it's a gala event, um, whether it's a conference or any type of other thing besides that Real Talk school tour, you can personally contact my executive director, Mary Sullivan, at mary at missflorida.org. All requests go through her. Um, she controls your schedule. Yes. Yeah. She not only controls the schedule, she's executive director, businesswoman, pageant mom. She handles it all. I had to go through um, her to get Courtney here just for our commissioner's <laughs> just taping today. today. Yes, so, yes. Uh, she it, handles it but, all. But she needs to be able to control that part of your schedule so that you're not being pulled all over the state because you're not Miss Polk County. You're Miss Florida so you go all over. Exactly and it's great to have that person that can say okay so you're in Jacksonville on Monday well in my mind I probably wouldn't have thought what's the big deal of going to Miami Monday night and then going to Tampa on Tuesday morning but she's really good about working the map in the right mm -hmm. way and making sure Miss Florida stays healthy and happy during her year so I'm very thankful for all that she does with booking but I do hope anyone who's watching this Please feel free to, if you would like to have me at your event, I would love to be a part of it. That's what I want as Miss Florida is to have a big presence in Lakeland. Or if they can't remember that, contact my office and I can put them in touch with Mary. I've got her email address as well. So Perfect, yes. Mm -hmm. And in terms of future contestants, because I know okay. your time is coming up pretty soon. Okay, let's not talk about that, okay? <laughs> coming up soon, I have a few more months. I think like four and a half. Yep. I'm clinging on tight. You're clinging on tight. <laughs> but when that time does come. Yes, and it will come fast. What's your advice to the future and upcoming? First, to be yourself. I think I got the title of Miss Florida by being true to who I was. And um, one of my Miss America sisters, Miss Vermont, told me this week um, and told all of us in giving advice to future girls, because we have a 10 minute interview with the judges. And she said, let the girls know that if you can't be yourself within that 10 minute interview with the judges, how can you expect to be yourself for an entire year for an entire state? And that really hit home because it's true. You really have to stay true to who you are and you know, being able to represent this organization you know, with that servant's heart. Um, and then also, you know, with, coming, with being true to who you are is think of this as a job. It is a true and You've job. approached it that way. Yes. I, I mean, she is very professional in everything Thank that she's you. done. It's been a pleasure getting to know Courtney and her approach is she's not just sitting around waiting for something to happen. She's out proactively promoting the pageant, promoting the contest, promoting everything that goes with it. So she's been a great ambassador for the Miss Florida program. Thank you, thank you, thank and you. And Commissioner Nashley, back to you. What is the process, Nick? How hard was it to get it back to Polk County or the, the, the pageant to Polk County? Um, once we got some buy-in, then everybody worked real hard to make it happen. I was at just a couple of the meetings. I wasn't at a lot of them. 
uh, but Mary Sullivan uh, and last year's Miss Florida, Mary, Mary Catherine, Catherine, you know, they did yeoman's work for the pageant, um, but negotiations had to go on with the hotels, they had to book the theater, the Yawkey Theater at the Lakeland Center. Um, contracts had to be drawn up, so we've got them for five years at least, and hopefully we will we will be so welcoming they will not ever want to leave us again. Um, Sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, all, I'm all excited for that. But, but the city of Lakeland bought into it, Polk County Tourism, Sports yeah. Marketing, like I said before, there was a lot of moving pieces that went into bringing it back. And again, I wasn't at every meeting, but everyone I was at, everyone's goal was to bring it back here. And it all started with the drive of Mary Sullivan, in my opinion. Did, She's yeah. the one who lit the fire. Uh, it got me excited about it. Uh, I called Mayor Wiggs and he said, when do you want to meet? I mean, it was that quick. And then a lot of grinding work had to go on. Um, they got through it and we're lucky to have them. And um, Courtney's the first one from Polk County. Well, in the community of Lakeland, once you know all that groundwork is done, because right. I kind of saw it after that groundwork was over, but once that was done and the connections were made right. through Todd, through Mary, with Miss Florida last year, this community has just wrapped their arms around us. And Miss Florida 2017 is going to inherit a lot of that hard work yes. that you and Mary have done, yes. uh, setting up living arrangements. Uh, and all that goes with it. So. Yeah, the car, the furniture, all, all of that she will hopefully inherit, it, but in understanding how you know special it is to be in Lakeland, right. and it really is. We're grateful to be here, and we're thankful for the community of Lakeland for Absolutely. you know welcoming us with open arms and embracing us all year round. Okay, perfect. And Miss Florida, tell me a little bit of some of the things you do with the responsibilities that fall under the crown. Um, well, my day to day is totally different from Monday to Tuesday. It's, you know, so different. I look at last week to this week. Last week was I was going to, you know, four to five schools all throughout the week, focusing on, you know, my two school tours and then a few events here and there. But I can go on, say, a Monday at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., and talk to kids about real talk, going into high schools and middle schools. And then that afternoon, I might have a business lunch right. with a business leader in Lakeland, focusing on sponsorship or focusing on you know the future of the Miss Florida pageant. And then come the night, I might be at a baseball event shaking hands with the governor. It, it ranges, and I'm grateful for that. Um, but it's a lot of different things every day, a lot of volunteering, a lot of speaking, um, in the fall, we invited her to be at our company barbecue. So she came as a Leland yes. Young's barbecue a barn. I got her my cowgirl boots. She got her <laughs> cowgirl boots. And when a beautiful young woman with a crown and a sash walks up, they don't need it. They forget about the commissioners. <laughs> Grady wouldn't have stood a chance. They, they came up and she was the highlight of the party. And um, my favorite just, thing is in Florida, I think, is meeting people right. and getting to build a connection with someone. And that's genuine from her, I can assure oh, you. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. And so I think that's what kind of has helped me in the title of Miss Florida is going to all these events is for me, it's just an opportunity to meet people. It's an opportunity to connect. It's an opportunity to say, hey, what's your story? Mm -hmm. I'd love to tell you mine. I'd love to tell you about this amazing organization that is giving me so much. And then it turns into something big. Yep, yeah. <laughs> Well, Commissioner Dantzler, we're wrapping up now and almost out of time. What are your final remarks? Uh, couldn't be more proud of Courtney and I couldn't be more proud of the pageant that, and what it has done for Polk County. It's a class event. I invite everyone to come out. It's the week before July 4th. The crowning uh, July 1st. July Please 1st. come out. And there's stuff, there's judging and contests throughout the week. So mm -hmm. if you can't make the final, um, you can do different events throughout the week. And, and we're trying to come up with other events, some fun events to get the community involved. So listen out for those on the radio and on TV as it gets closer. Right. And Courtney, what about you? I just want to say thank you so much for having me. It has been an honor to not only represent the state of Florida, but to have this home in Lakeland and in Polk County. I'm grateful for all of the sponsors um, no Bay, Badcock, my car sponsor um, with Cox Chevrolet in Bradenton. I mean, people have just truly wrapped their arms around me. So my ending would just be a thank you to everyone. Perfect. And with that, we're going to close off this part of the show, but we have more coming up right after this break. <laughs> So, same time next week? Well, of course. Welcome back to the Commissioner's Report. I'm your host, Kevin Watler, and we're going to get to know a company in Mulberry. It's called Clark Environmental. And before we get started into the discussion, let's watch a video about the company. In 1989, 
Beth and Jim Clark moved to the Central Florida area in search of new opportunities. Not long after their move, they would find that opportunity when they began Clark Environmental, located in Mulberry. With Jim's experience in the industry and Beth's business background, they began what would become two and a half decades of serving the community with environmentally friendly soil remediation. When they began Clark Environmental in 1991, they started small with just five employees, four acres of property, and one building to run their operation from. In those early days, they were licensed to operate 25 tons per hour processing and were off the ground and running, doing nearly $700,000 in sales in their first year. As with any startup, starting small was necessary, and they relied on customers hauling material to their facility for processing. As the need for more processing grew, and the company grew, they began adding trucks of their own, starting with their first truck in 1993 to offer a full-service hauling, treatment, and disposal service. In 1998, Clark Environmental added state-of-the-art technology to the operation with their first small thermal treatment plant. The thermal treatment plant takes the solid waste after it has been completely separated from the liquids and sends it into a superheated chamber where all microbacteria and contaminants are destroyed and the soil becomes safe for reuse. 25 years after Beth and Jim opened the doors to their new facility, their small business looks much different. They now employ 22 workers doing nearly $5 million in sales with clients stretching all over the state of Florida. They are home to the largest thermal treatment plant east of the Mississippi and are licensed to process a whopping 75 tons per hour, which includes foreign soil processing. In addition to finding great success in their industry and becoming a leader among local area businesses, they are also seen as pillars of their local Mulberry community. Their passion for their employees and their neighbors has led them to take active involvement in community outreaches and events such as the Mulberry Dixie Youth Baseball and Softball Leagues, Boys and Girls Club, and the Mulberry Community Center. They sponsor the petting zoo at the annual Founders Day celebration and were a huge part of the remodel and upgrades to the Mulberry Phosphate Museum. In addition to their philanthropic community involvement, Clark Environmental is an Imperial Diamond Club member of the Mulberry Chamber of Commerce and take an active role as a key member of the Industry Community Advisory Panel. In 2011, Florida Trend Magazine named Clark Environmental as one of the state's top 100 places to work, and they have been awarded multiple Best Places to Work awards by CareerSource Polk. Thanks to the continued efforts and countless hours spent providing valuable services to the Mulberry and Polk County community, we are proud to honor Clark Environmental as a Polk County Small Business of Excellence. So, Commissioner Bell, you nominated Clark Environmental to be recognized as a business of excellence and a small business here in Polk County. Why did you do that? Well, as you know, as chairman of our board this year, it's been my initiative to recognize small businesses because that's the backbone of our country, small business are. But here in Polk County, we have many, many small businesses. So I thought it was uh, real important to do that. And my business that I nominated this month is Clark Environmental. I've known Beth and her husband Jim for many, many years. Uh, back in the day when uh, they had just started their business, I met them and actually they were involved um, with the Economic Development Council at that time here in the county and, and got to know them, but was impressed of not only just their business, of their standards there, but also their philanthropy that they did in the community. They were, they were everywhere in this county. Wonderful. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So Beth, tell me a little bit about your company's history. Well, Clark Environmental started back in 1991. Um, my husband Jim and I, he's got the expertise in the environmental side and I've got the business side. So we decided, why not? Let's try this on our own. And we started with five people and about $80,000 and it was family finance because we couldn't find a bank to finance us. And we started handling waste disposal. It's a need that's needed in industry to handle waste properly. And so we began one step at a time. 
So you're the expert, Jem. She says uh -oh. you are. <laughs> Tell us about what your company offers. We handle liquids, solid sludges, drum, bulk form, and I think the main goal we try to do is recycle as much as we can. That's the main thing for the environment, is to try to take material that are waste and try to make them into something that's useful. Wonderful. And your company is located in Mulberry. Why in the world would you choose Mulberry? I'll let Jim handle that one. Well, um, when we first started off, we were looking for something centrally located in the state of Florida. No better place than Mulberry, Florida, and there was a piece of property there that suited our needs. We leased part of it, and then there was, uh, I guess everybody knows about the spill in the Port of Tampa, and that was the big boost that got us to where we actually purchased all 10 acres. Perfect. Yes. So that's how you ended up there. That's right. <laughs> Perfect. So when you decided to open Clark in Environmental back in the 90s, did you think that in a couple decades you'll be at 20 employees? No, and we have grandchildren now that are as old as our children were when we first started the business. So no, I, I don't think we thought at all that this was going to last for 26 years. We just celebrated our 26th anniversary. So it's been an incredible ride. Wonderful. Uh, and uh, you know, you say, why environmentally friendly soil remediation? Why, why, why is that important? Well, what we found in industry is that it's important to dispose of your waste. Everyone, most industries develop waste, and it's important to dispose of it properly. And so we provide that avenue of proper disposal, which is why DEP likes us so much. And we have a very good working relationship with DEP because um, DEP knows industry needs people like us. When I got involved in the business in 80, um, everything was going to landfill, has, non-has, everything like that. I mean, lakes were on fire and all that. And I've seen the progression through the years. To go ahead and try to make has, non-has, and try to take the non-has and recycle. And that's our goal. Absolutely. And you've really, uh, really helped out the mulberry economy. You, you guys are considered one of the pillars in, in the mulberry community. Um, how does that make you feel? I think I'm embarrassed. <laughs> uh, we're humbled and we're honored, quite frankly. We just feel like we're giving back. Uh, as part of a business owner, we feel like giving back to your community in which you belong is very important. I think that's one of the things both my parents and best parents instilled in us was to pay it forward, give back what we try to instill into our children and hopefully our children to their grandchildren. It's the family atmosphere and that's the way we run Clark Environmental, as a family atmosphere. And, and Commissioner Bell, you know, how, how, has, how, how has their company impacted the community in Polk County? Well, Polk County is very fortunate to have them land here in the middle of the state uh, to set up their business. Like I said earlier, we've been very fortunate to have such a family-owned business that's been involved in the community, not only just in Mulberry, but countywide they've been involved in. I know Beth said earlier she was a, a candidate of uh, Leadership Polk. So you can imagine being a chosen for Leadership Polk, you had to be involved in, in Polk County. So we've been very, very, very blessed to have this company here. Perfect. Uh, so Community, of, in, community involvement is a big part of your company. That's correct. Let's talk about that. Well, we, we support the community of Mulberry. So Mulberry, we feel, is a small community. And being a business located in Mulberry, that's where we like to direct our efforts. So we, we've supported the Dixie Youth League, the, the Mulberry Community Service Center. Um, one of the big uh, benefits that we've been able to do, bring to Mulberry is the Mulberry Phosphate Museum. We've helped renovate several of the different galleries there uh, that represent the phosphate industry and then the history of Mulberry. And then we're very uh, big supporters of the Mulberry Chamber of Commerce. Absolutely. And with the Chamber of Commerce, you guys are a Imperial Diamond Club member. What is that? Right. Well, that just means we give a few extra bucks. Kind of, we're in the category of Mosaic and mm -hmm. SunTrust and uh, Badcock, believe it or not. Wow. And that's how strongly we feel about Mulberry. We feel like the Mulberry Chamber is one of the things that can help benefit Mulberry. It's wonderful. I mean, that's <laughs> if you're up there with Mosaic and stuff, that's an amazing, <laughs> uh, amazing uh, accomplishment. Thank and, you. And if you were to poll people on the street about Clark Environment, especially in Mulberry. You know, they would say, oh yeah, I know, I know about them, they're wonderful, they, they do a lot of great things for our youth here in, in our community and along with the chamber. Absolutely. And also in 2011, it said the Florida Trend Magazine named the Clark Environmental as one of the state's top 100 places 
to work. I wow. know. That's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. That's what it is. It was awesome. So we, we're very honored and very humbled by that award. And uh, I would say that was probably one of our greatest accomplishments. Yes, what the heck? Yeah. That, that I just, you know, top 100 places in the state. That's I mean, there's a lot of places I in the know. state. That's well, right. Well, a lot of things, too. It's... Beth and I realize it's not so much us, it's the people that work for us that make the company. And um, we like to say that people don't leave Clark, they retire. <laughs> yep. And your motto is cleaning earth one ton at a time. That's correct. How did you come up with that one? Well, that's what we do. We clean earth one ton at a time. So um, I'm not real sure how we, probably some brainstorming session that we had in a manager's meeting or um, we do employee ideas, that type of, so who knows where it came from, but it definitely morphed over time. Wonderful. And, you know, you guys, small business owner, what if someone was thinking, hey, I'm considering starting a small business, what would be the advice you have for those individuals? The first thing that popped in my head is be brave. Um, go in with more money than you think you need. Uh, back yourself with uh, people that, that can give you good advice. Um, Jim and I actually were talking about this recently. You better have a good business plan. Yes. And you better, you better look at where, who you're going to market and if, and if there's competition out there. Because just because you want to start a restaurant, you better check out who you're going to compete against in order to have uh, the ability to succeed. Wonderful. Well, we're almost out of time. So I'm going to start the closing uh, comments process. So, so Jim, I'm going to start with you. Um, I will tell you this. I want, give back to the community when you open your business. It's the most important thing in the world. Um, the people that are around you, people that help you, people support you. Um, I will say this. Uh, I was thinking about this before. One of the best things that we have is this young lady right here. Um, Beth is not only a good daughter, uh, she's a good mom, but she's also a very good grandmother. And it's all about family. And, and that's what we built Clark Environmental on. Very important. Absolutely. Okay. Beth, you have, you have time for some final remarks. Um, I would say it's the employees. So definitely Clark Environmental, so the reason why I guess we're surprised and we're humbled that these different things happen is because it's not Beth and Jim Clark that's doing it. It's all the employees at Clark Environmental that make a team that's, made, that's creating what has happened at Clark. And, uh, and definitely I think Jim and I have been through thick and thin together and I don't think we could have done it without each other. <laughs> awesome. Commissioner Bell, what do you have to add? Well, I would say, you know, like Beth said earlier, have the courage to start a business for people that want this, even thinking about an idea, but do your homework before you do. But invest in your employees. And you can talk to their employees, and they love Clark Environment. They love getting up and going to work, and, you know, it's a place of family. And so, um, you know, I would send a message out to all of our small businesses. It's not going to happen overnight. As you know, it didn't happen with them overnight. And, um, you are going to have your lows and your highs, but uh, but just thank you from the bottom of our heart and for landing here in Polk County and supporting us and paying your taxes and, and being <laughs> <laughs> and being a great philanthropist in the community. Thank we you. you. Thank you very much. We appreciate Bell. you for this honor. We really do. Thank you very much. Well, just also want to say congratulations to you all, and that's it for the commissioner's report for this month. But we'll be back again next month. See you next time. told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise. And be the hero that I've always wanted to be. They said a bottle was just a bottle. That no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. <laughs>